Hi, my name is Tina, and this is Knitting Blooms. You can find show notes for everything I talk about on my blog at www.knittingblooms.com. And if I miss a link, please feel free to contact me on Ravelry as Blooming Knitter. Or you can email me at knittingblooms at gmail.com. Come and join the Ravelry group so you can be eligible for all the prize drawings. And be sure to introduce yourself so that I can get to know you also. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter as Bloomy Knitter. And don't forget to click the like button on Facebook for Knitting Blooms. Lolo Baby, available in Soft Vanilla, Lavender Dreams, and Plain and Simple, has been a big hit among OBGYN staff, new moms, daycare personnel, and men over 60. A swipe on the diaper area, a bit for a massage, or something to help with cradle cap, we understand. But why are men buying this? So we asked. We just had to know. And they told us. They are buying Lolo Baby and using it for itch, heat, and chafing in their southern hemisphere. We pressed on with our somewhat awkward questions and we found out that while they loved Lolo Baby, they wanted two things to be different the label, and a cooling element. So along came Southern Comfort. Don't let the mustache on the label lead you to think it's only for men. Women are buying it as well. And yes, we had to ask. And we were told they were using it for all the same reasons, though they used different words like friction and rash. Southern Comfort is ideal for those that bike, pedal, or motor, Those that wear skirts with no pantyhose and those that could just use some comfort in their southern hemisphere. Southern Comfort is for external use only. To buy, visit www.bar-maids.com. Hi and welcome to the show. Thanks so much for joining me today. I have a lot to share with you today as has been typical since I went to a bi-weekly schedule. Cody is here with me today. I think he's going to try and sit on my lap. (laughs) We're probably not going to let him, but (laughs) we'll give him a little scratch on the head. But yes, I have a lot to share with you today. I'm going to try and keep it under an hour. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be possible, and I might have to cut out some stuff, but I don't know what I'm going to cut at this point. Right now, I'm planning on sharing with you um, a few of my projects, not all of my projects this week, because I do have so much to share. I'm going to, we have lots of prize drawings because we have lots of cows that were finished up in November and just lots of, lots of prizes. Uh, I have a book review for you today and I'm hoping to answer a question. So the question is probably what's going to get cut if um, I run long on time. But if the question does get cut, I will post it next week as, you know, a mini episode. So let me get started. Um, I just want to give you a quick week, like kind of week in review. Um, it has been another crazy, crazy couple of weeks for me. Um, a couple weeks ago after I last recorded, I had a bit of car trouble and that was kind of frustrating. Uh, we did find out that it was just the starter and Steve was able to fix that pretty easily. Um, it was you know, the cost of the part and he did the labor obviously for free. Uh, So that was good. We were able to get that fixed. Um, But it did cause a bit of stress for me for a couple of days because I got stranded at the grocery store with groceries in the car. And then the next day I couldn't go to uh, my chiropractor because the car died. I couldn't get it started. So it did cause me a bit of stress. But like, like I said, Steve got that fixed that same day um, and that's back to normal. I have been picking up on my Knittopia stuff. Knittopia is coming up in March. And speaking of Knittopia, we actually have a few open spots. We had to have a couple people cancel uh, for the retreat for personal reasons and work related reasons. So we have one spot available for the second weekend, as well as a number of midweek spots. So if you are interested in attending 
Knittopia 2014, get in contact with me and hopefully one of those spots will be available and you can jump in and join us. But because it is coming up in March, um, my planning and everything is getting crazy busy and that's going to be taking up a lot of my time in the, the coming months, planning the menus and the classes and organizing the swaps and that sort of thing and just organizing everything in general. But I'm going to try and keep it keep it going pretty, you know, on a steady pace so that I'm not swamped at the end, which is what I really try to do. Um, also, if you don't if you if you think you might be interested in the retreat, uh, but you can't commit right now, you can still put your name on the waiting list. When I had these spots open up, I did go through everybody who was on the wait list um, to find out if they were interested in, in attending or if they could attend. So we do have an empty wait list. So if you can't commit right now, get your name on the wait list because it's possible that something might happen and somebody else might need to cancel. It It does happen and I know that and I try to fill the spots as best I can. In addition to all that, the stress of, you know, the added pressure of Knittopia coming quickly and the stress of my car, I kind of lost my knitting mojo for a while. I have gotten it back, but for like a week there, I just was not hardly knitting at all. Um, like I said, I have gotten it back, but now I'm kind of busy reading. I've been trying to catch up on my reading list because I have not read all the books that I wanted to read this year and or the number of books that I wanted to read. So the last few days I've been really reading a lot and listening to audiobooks when I can't be actually physically reading to try and catch up. And I've really been enjoying it. I've read a couple of really great books in the last couple of weeks and listened to some audiobooks uh, that, you know, they, I think they were free and stuff like that. So it's been, it's been fun uh, to get caught up on reading and just to use my imagination, which means that I haven't watched a lot of podcasts. However, there have been some times that I have taken some time just to watch some podcasts just because, you know, sometimes you just need a break from, from reading. And what I've been doing, because I am extremely far behind on podcasts, is that I'm just kind of deciding, okay, I'm going to watch, you know, Single Hand and Knits today, and I'll just watch all of the episodes, you know, in order, as many as I can watch while I'm, um, you know, watching podcasts. And I'll just pick, pick a podcast each day and just watch one, and just watch all the ones I can watch. I mean, sometimes I have six episodes, and that sometimes means six hours of podcast. Although, I do watch on um, two times speed, so that kind of speeds things along a little bit. But I, sometimes I still can't get through all the episodes that are available for a certain podcast. But I haven't been um, marking them as, as watched or, or listened to. I've just kind of been letting them pile up. And eventually I might decide that I'm going to mark them as watched if it's like two months later. But right now I'm just kind of taking it one day at a time and if I feel like reading I read if I feel like watching a podcast I watch a podcast so I have been doing that I have also been dyeing some yarn which I will show you shortly when I show you one of the projects that I'm working on and um, that has been a lot of fun and that's one of the things that helped me get my knitting mojo back is to dye that yarn and to start knitting with it so like I said I'll show you that shortly and I am looking forward to a nice long holiday weekend. I actually took Monday and Tuesday off next week so that I could have a five day holiday weekend. And I'm really looking forward to that. So I have one more day of work because I am recording on Thursday evening. And then I have a five day holiday weekend, which will be great. And then work probably won't be very busy between Christmas and New Year's. So I'll be working then, but I think it'll be pretty slow or pretty quiet. It's been pretty quiet all week this week, um, so I suspect that it will be pretty quiet in the coming weeks, uh, or the coming week after um, Christmas as well. So let's go ahead and jump into the knitting progress. Like I said, I'm only going to show you a couple projects this week, and actually, yeah, this is these are the projects I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you four projects. 
The first one is the Little Big Shrug. The, the, that's the one, what I'm calling it in my um, project notes. And I have made some progress on this. And it is just a shrug where you start at one arm and work ac across. It's like mostly a, just a rectangle, but you have, because of the, um, the cuff, it kind of has a little bit of shape to it, but not really. Uh, this is coming right along. I did make a small error because I thought I knew what I was doing without reading the pattern, and apparently I didn't. But I did continue, um, and I knew when I was doing it that something wasn't quite right, but I just didn't listen to my, my brain saying, that doesn't seem right, Why that, that doesn't seem right. I just kept going and I think it's going to be fine. I don't think you're going to be able to tell where it is, but um, this one section that is this one right here, um, it's actually, I put the, the yarn over on the wrong side of the, uh, the slip slip knit. And it doesn't look bad because I made sure that I did it for the whole four or eight it's eight row repeat for the whole eight row repeat. So it doesn't look like, oops, I figured it out after the first row and then I corrected it. I just did it the same way because I really didn't feel like ripping it out. And honestly, it's not going to be really noticeable once it's done. I mean, I, I can look at it and see the, how the, um, the slip slip knits look kind of wonky because usually when you do a slip slip knit, they're all running together or the knit two togethers, they're all running in the same direction. But it does look a little bit wonky, but honestly, it's not going to make that much of a difference. So the last time I showed it to you, I had not started the lace patterning yet. And the pink marker is where I was. So I did um, five, um, five repeats. And actually, it's, it would be two and a half because really the repeat is the two sections. It's, it's a 16 row repeat. So... It's coming along. I haven't actually worked on this one in the last couple of days because I've been really excited about the um, the project that I do. I'm doing with the yarn that I dyed. So I have been working on this like in the morning, like if I am sitting down to watch a podcast, but um, not as much in the last few days because I've been really inspired by this other project. So that is the little big shrug that I'm working on. And the next one is my transitioning to winter shawl. It is coming along. Last week, or the last time I recorded, I think I was still on clue number one. And I am now on clue four. And I've made some progress. And there's my, my uh, dicky do. And I have made some progress. And kind of what I'm doing with this, with this shawl is I am doing... I'm trying to do a minimum of four rows before I start on my other projects that I'm really motivated or inspired to work on. And it's not that I'm not enjoying this project. It's just that um, there's so many other things that I want to knit. So I'm, I am enjoying it when I'm working on it. It's just that I want to do so many other things that... Um, I am not wanting to just sit down and only work on this project. But I, like I said, I am trying to work on at least do four rows every day so that I can get it done. And I, like I said, I'm on the, uh, the fourth chart and not that far into the fourth chart. I think I'm like eight or 10 rows into the fourth chart. So it's coming right along. It's, I love it. I mean, obviously I love it because I designed it, but there it is, kind of is. So that is the transition into winter shawl number two for me. Oh, one thing I did want to mention about this yarn, which I'm kind of disappointed about, but honestly, for the price point, I can't be disappointed. But you see, I have a lot of ends here. I have a lot of ends on this. Um, and it's because there have been a lot of knots. I wouldn't normally have this many ends. You can see here's a knot right here. Um, but 
yeah, there's been a lot of knots. I think there was a knot here, a knot here, a knot right here. And I believe this part over here is where I actually changed to the new, the, the new ball, which is the only one that I should really have. But I do not like knots in my knitting. So I always, you know, break it out when I find a knot in the yarn. Um, it is a pain because then I have to go back and weave in the ends. But honestly, for this, the price point, I think the balls were like, the, um, they were 50 gram balls. And I, um, it's actually Drops Fable. And I think it was like 450 for a, for a ball. So really, I can't, I can't really complain because it was, it was an expensive yarn. And, you know, it is what it is. But I did want to mention that. That's why I have all those <laughs> ends to weave in later. So that is transitioning to winter number two. The next one is Marley's Garden, which I restarted last week or two weeks ago. I had started Marley's Garden, and I can show you the one that I started because I started still have it in here. That's the new one. Oops, almost lost my stitches. This is the one I started a couple weeks ago. And yes, that kind of is that bright. <laughs> it's kind of bright. Um, but what I had done with this one was that I kind of changed up the pattern a bit and so that it would go all the way around. But then I didn't like how the edges were turning out. So I put this one down and I started a second one. Now you will notice that the second one is quite a bit smaller than the first one. This is the second one. And that's because I also went down a needle size. I believe that the last time I knit um, the mittens from Valerie, I knit them on a zero. And I really do like the, the stitch definition on the zero a little bit better. I'm gonna try and put them up close where you can see, if you can see the, the stitch de definition. So you'll see on, on this one here that the stitch definition is so much cleaner than on the, on the one over here. So I really do like it a lot better. And I am liking the way that the the edges are coming together um, because I am doing that that edge that edge stitch that goes up the um, up the side. Um, the one reason that I didn't want to do that up the side was because when I put the, on the mitts, they that that edge stitch tends to you know curve around my hand versus staying directly on the side. But you know you have to deal with it, I guess. But I am enjoying this. You will notice also that there's some slight differences with the two patterns. On this one over here, it's all um, green on the white. Whereas this one over here, and it's so bright, I don't even know if you'll be able to tell, but there is, it's white on the green. And that's one thing that I didn't um, pay attention to when I was kind of changing the pattern up. And I really do like how Valerie did this one better where she has it alternating. So I'm glad that I started it over. This one is still going to fit me just fine. Um, because like I said, I think I used the zeros before. Um, this one would have fit me, but it would have been a lot bigger. But th like I said, the stitches were kind of wonky on this one. So this is turning out fabulous. Again, this is another project that I'm trying to do um, one section on um, each, each day. It's not happening because I started this on Monday and I only have two sections done. That means I haven't worked on it in the last couple of days. But, and I can't believe how bright that color is on the screen, but it is, um, it is a bright, bright green color. So that is the Marley's Garden. So now I will tell you about the, the project that I dyed the yarn for. I've been wanting to do another knit swirl for Knittopia. I did a knit swirl for Knittopia last year, and it is going to be an ongoing uh, knit along for Knittopia because the sweater, the book, um, the Knits World book has like I think 12 to 15 sweaters, different style sweaters in it. And the sweater, the, the construction of the sweater really looks great on every body type. 
So we are continuing the, um, the knit swirl and I wanted to buy more yarn for it, but I told myself I have so much yarn, as you can see behind me, that I'm sure that there's something in my stash that I have enough yardage for to make a knit swirl. And of course I did. I actually had a bunch of this Peyton's um, Classic Wool in the, I think it's, it's leaf green. I have, I had like over nine skeins of it. Um, in fact, I still have two more skeins up there that are not dyed. But I think there was nine skeins that had the same dye lot. So, um, I figured out that I needed to use seven or eight skeins. Seven would have been right at the point um, of the yardage, but I decided to go with eight and, um, and dye up eight skeins. So what I did was I took it out of this skein and I wound it on my Nitty Knotty into a long Hank skein so that I could dye it. And again, eight skeins of this. The last time I did some kettle dyeing, I dyed seven skeins of silky wool, but it, that's a DK weight and it's a lot, um, a lot smaller than this worsted weight patents. But I thought I would have enough room in my dye pot and I was really, really nervous when I went to soak the yarn and it barely fit in there. I was so nervous. I was like, okay, I have to make this work. But I did, once it got soaked and once it really absorbed the water quite a bit, um, I was able to um, use the dye pot and get the, the skeins down in the water enough where the dye sunk in pretty good. And this was the result. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen this um, a few weeks ago or last week or something. But this is the result of what I, what I dyed. This was the original color. And these skeins here are um, a sampling of how it turned out. And I really, really like how it turned out. However, I wish I had stopped one color short because this is a little greener than I had wanted. I kind of wanted a more bluish green, uh, but my last color that I put on this was a teal. And I think it was just had a little bit too much green in that color uh, because that's really what stood out. Although I really like how the yarn came out. It's just the more and more that I dye yarn or over dye yarn with a kettle dye, I just am really enjoying it. I, I mean, yeah, I had the, I had the Peyton's wool and it was the perfect, the perfect thing. Um, but because I, this is just a, you know, a flat color, I really wanted to do something with it. And I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. And I have knit a couple of swatches. Here's my original swatch that I did, um, with the patterning for the knit swirl. And I found that it was slightly, um, too big of a, of a needle. So I had to go down a size and I just did another small swatch. Um, to go down a size. So that's what it's kind of looking like in the in the knitting. And I have um, done a fair bit. I mean, when you're casting on, I don't know how many, it was like, it was over 500 stitches. I think it was close to 550 stitches. It takes a while to do a round. But I have done one, two, three, four welts and I'm halfway through the fifth welt. So let me show you the right side. This is going to be the right side. And it is really coming out nicely. And I am using my eBay needles with the little curve on them. They are working out fabulously for this large um, knitting. The only time I've used the eBay needles so far to date is to do some s small circumference socks um, with the Magic Loop. But this is the first time I've used it for something a little bit bigger. And honestly, that little bend in the needle, I don't even notice when I'm working on them. You know, they're not as pointy as um, the Haya Haya's. But honestly, do I need a pointy needle for a worsted weight? Um, I am doing some eyelets, but um, not, there's not, it's not like it's a lot of lace or anything like that. But 
there it is and like I said I'm really liking how it's coming out um, I have a long way to go I am using a 47 inch right now I believe the pattern calls for starting with a 32 inch needle for my size but honestly that's just too small for this many stitches I I already have trouble pushing these around you know because um, it's just gets too too bulked up on here but um, but yeah I'm really enjoying these needles I'm enjoying seeing this yarn that I dyed work up and it's just a lot of fun to to be able to dye your own yarn and then knit with it so that is the last project I'm going to show you today I would really like to just knit on this for a while but I have some more things to share with you so I'm going to put that aside so that I can move on to the other things that we have to share. I have been working on my basic socks. I have two pairs of basic socks on the needles right now. I have my North Cabin Fibercrafts um, on my needles as well as some Into the World. I'm not showing you those today because they're both plain stockinette socks and there's not a whole lot to look at, just just my my progress on them. But I am working on those when I get on my ball to bounce, um, and I'm trying to get back in the habit of getting 15,000 steps every day. I for a week or so, or almost it was almost two weeks, I was without a Fitbit because I had to return it for warranty replacement. And um, basically during that time, I just didn't do a lot of anything. Um, I know it's kind of bad that you have to have something tracking your steps in order to feel like feel motivated to, to to get steps in but that's kind of how it was for me over the last the week couple weeks that I didn't have it and now that I have it back it's like okay now I really have to push myself and get my steps in so I have been setting out a plan for myself um, you know that I'm gonna do at least 3,000 steps before I go to work 6,000 steps sometime you know throughout the day and then another 6,000 steps when I get home Sometimes I get further along than my 6,000 steps at work, and I don't have as much to do when I get home, which is awesome sometimes. But um, sometimes I fall a little bit behind, too. But at least I have that plan and, you know, don't feel like I'm, it's so overwhelming. Because 15,000 steps, I mean, a lot of people think, oh, that's, that's really overwhelming. But if you, if you plan it out and you say you have a certain amount you want to get done by a certain time, it's a lot easier to accomplish. Just like when I did the 40,000 steps um, a while back, I do have a goal to do another 40,000 step day. I don't know exactly when that's going to be. I'm probably going to do it either on a weekend, probably a Sunday, or um, one day that I'm off during the holiday. Um, I haven't really decided yet. I want to kind of see how I feel. I know that um, this weekend is going to be crazy busy. Um, we were doing family Christmas on Saturday, and I think Steve and I are going to do Christmas early on Sunday. Just because then we have three more days just to kind of chill and relax and just enjoy each other's company. So I'm not sure what we're going to do there, but um, we'll see how it goes. And, and I do want to get some knitting done and also some reading because I still have a couple more books that I want to get in before the end of the year. And um, I'm just happy just to curl up in the couch and with a book and my knitting and just read and the knit swirl is perfect for that because I can work on that and read at the same time. So yeah, that's my plan for the holiday. I have done a bit of spinning, but really nothing much to speak of. Um, I just haven't been haven't been doing it when I come home. Usually when I'm when I come home, I am just working on some um, brainless knitting. Um, so I really haven't done a lot of spinning, although there's been talk on the um, Knitopia board about the um, the spinning, and I today just reading a couple of posts and just remembering how much of a relaxing thing the spinning is. And I really during the holidays I really want to, you know, spend some time spinning and try and get get some progress done. I still have. Um, a braid and a half left of the fiber nymph to get done 
before I can start plying and I really want to get a sweater started with that before Knittopia um, 2014 which is in March um, because that's the yarn that's the colorway from Knittopia 2013 and I was spinning for a sweater so I'd like to at least get the yarn plied up and um, decide on a sweater at that point and get that started before the retreat next year. The first thing I want to mention is a little bit of stash enhancement. And actually, the first item is was kind of was a gift to me, and I'm very excited about it. So I wanted to share it with you all. And it is some stitch markers. And I'm so these stitch markers are so cool. They actually have the Knitting Blooms logo. See if I can get it to focus. Kate of Kate Pillar Designs has taken the Knitting Blooms logo and made stitch markers. And they are so cool. I am so excited about this. Kate just contacted me one day and said, hey, I have a little surprise for you and I'd like to send it to you. And I gave her my address and these came in the mail and they are so cool. I haven't taken them off the, um, the card yet because I wanted to show you and I was afraid that if I took them off, um, they would end up in my bag and, or on a project and, you know, I wouldn't be able to show you. But are they not the coolest thing? If you have not checked out um, Kate's shop, definitely, definitely go check that out. She does all sorts of different ones. I, um, I actually checked out her shop and I could not um, decide which ones I wanted to get. Very, very cool. Her shop is at um, www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash caterpillar. Let's see if I can get that to focus. There we go. This camera just takes a little bit longer to focus than um, the last camera. But as you can see, it's much better image quality. So that is one of the stash enhancements. Now, I did have a bunch of stuff that I didn't show you from um, Knitting in the Mitten. Um, I had a couple skeins of yarn. Um, but I hope to have that posted on my Ravelry page very soon. I took pictures of it this past weekend. I just haven't had a chance to upload it yet. And the last thing that I got are some Addy Turbo Sock Rockets. I've heard a lot of people talk about these and I have never tried them. So I wanted to check them out. And actually, I went over to Amazon. I just did a quick search online because um, I wasn't quite sure where to get them. So I did a quick search online and Google and found out that Amazon had them and they had the zeros, which is what I usually use for socks. So I went ahead and I purchased them. And as I'm looking at this, this one is definitely not a zero. It says zero, but I'm gonna have to contact them. I was, when I got these in the mail the other day, I thought it was kind of weird that this one had a blue cable and, and the other ones had a gold cable. So, but now I'm looking at them side by side with the other ones, it's definitely not a zero. And I think it's listed on the, I see some writing on the um, cable, but, um, I think it's a, um, I don't know, I have to, I think, I don't know what it is. I have to, I have to look at it, I have to pull it out, but it's definitely not a zero. So I'm going to have to contact them about that. Anyway, I'm, I'm looking forward to checking out these, um, these needles and I will let you know how I like them once I have a chance to, to try them out. Um, I just, I just, I got two of them earlier this week. And then I got, I decided after I got those, I'm like, ah, I'm going to get another two. So I ordered another two. Um, but I haven't had a chance to put them on my projects yet. So here's where I will put in the book review for this time. The book review is uh, for Head to Toe by Cooperative Press. And here it is. Today I'm going to be reviewing the ebook 
Head to Toe by Cooperative Press, which can be purchased on the Cooperative Press website for $16.95. Or you could also purchase the PDF as well as the print version on the Cooperative Press website for $26.95. Just as the title suggests, this book contains patterns for parts of the body from head to toe, including the head, the neck, the hands, and the feet. This book contains a total of 24 patterns. What I expected when I saw the title of this book was patterns that would coordinate with one another for the head to the toes. As I already mentioned, there are patterns for the head to the toes, but they don't use the same stitch pattern. But they do use some of the same techniques, like color work, twisted rib, cables, and textured stitches. I did notice that almost all of the patterns were marked for an intermediate knitter, but I think an adventurous beginner would also do just fine with these patterns. One of the things that I really liked at the beginning of the book was the things to know section. And in that section, there is some information about yarn substitution. A more seasoned knitter will already know to consider not only the gauge and the weight of a yarn substitution, but also the fiber content. Although someone who hasn't been knitting very long may not know that these are important factors. There is also a section concerning swatching, and it mentions that if you are going to be knitting in the round, you should be knitting a swatch in the round. And again, this is something that maybe a knitter who hasn't been knitting very long may not realize is important to think about. On the other hand, in the tips and techniques section, it mentions that a pattern may tell you to work each stitch as it presents itself, meaning, if the stitch below is a knit stitch, then you would knit that next stitch. And if the next stitch was a purl stitch, you would purl that next stitch. However, there are knitters that do not know how to read their knitting and may not realize what stitch they are supposed to do in that particular case. So I do recommend that if you would like to knit a project out of this book, that you learn how to read your knitting to be able to tell whether you are working a knit stitch or a purl stitch. This is a very basic concept, and honestly, I think all knitters should be able to read their knitting, at least to realize if they are working a knit stitch or a purl stitch. I found that most of the patterns in this book, although they are simple concepts, they are very creatively designed. Now I will run through a few of the patterns in this book. Starting with head things. The first pattern that I will talk about is the North Umberland hat. This is a stock and a hat with just a touch of color work. The next hat is the Simon side, which is a ribbed hat with a wide cable. The next hat is Degar, which is, I think, how you pronounce it. It is a stockinette hat with a splash of twisted rib to add pizzazz. And then there's the Whalem hat, which again has twisted rib with a little twist on that. And now we will move on to the neck things. The first being Harbottle, which is a simple cow with a bit of a texture, followed by Tying green, which again is a simple pattern, but has a cable. And then there is checkers, which incorporates a Mobius and is worked in a basket weave type pattern. Followed by Milfortlet, which is a scarf that has lots of different textures throughout the scarf. And if you would like to do some color work in a scarf, then try Wetland, which uses the double knitting technique. And now we move on to the hand things. The first pattern is doodle gloves, which uses color work. And there are patterns for both mitts and gloves. And then there's Chevoit Hills, which incorporates different textures to make some fantastic mitts. And if you're looking for just a simple rib with a bit of cable, then try the backhand hitch. And now moving on to a couple of the foot patterns. The first one being cobbles, which contains a simple seed stitch type pattern for the leg 
and just a plain stockinette foot. And then there's peg whistle, which again uses the twisted stitch type pattern with a twist. And again, if you want to have some color work in your socks, then try cannon fire. And there you have it, loads of patterns for the head, neck, hands and feet for that little one of yours that you need to keep nice and warm. Again, you can purchase this book on the Cooperative Press website for $16.95. That's for the ebook version. Or you can purchase the print and the ebook version for $26.95. So I hope you enjoyed that book review. And if you would like to have a chance to win a copy of that book, then hop on over to the thread in the Ravelry group and, um, and enter to win. I'm going to, again, ask for the same thing as I have in the past for you to list your favorite, ha your favorite projects in the book. And if you can, link pictures or what have you um, so that we can all see what you have chosen. And I will probably leave this open for a few weeks, at least two, um, probably longer. I haven't decided yet when I'm going to record after the first of the year. I'm recording now. I won't be recording next week. I will have a tutorial next week. And I probably will have a tutorial the following week as well and then record the following week. So it'll be another three-week delay on my next recording so I probably will do the drawing at that time because I really don't want to push it out to five weeks so um, so yeah so go and enter to win um, for a chance to win that book head to toe from cooperative press speaking of drawings let's get on to the drawings we have lots of drawings this week um, I have a couple of impromptu drawings that weren't exactly planned but that's okay. We like impromptu drawings. Anything for prizes. So let's start with the colorwork mittens. Now we just started this colorwork mitten knit along at the beginning of December. And I am going to do um, a, um, a drawing for a pattern of $7 or less from the chatter thread. So just like we have been doing for the North Cabin Fiber Crafts and for the Mystery Knit Along, I'm going to do the same thing for this knit along as well, just to randomly draw from the chatter thread uh, f during the knit along. Because I just really enjoy reading the chatter and seeing what everybody's working on and just getting pulled into the excitement that everybody else is, is having up for the knit along. So... The first drawing is for the um, for the for the mitten knit along the the chatter thread from the mitten knit along, and again it's for a seven dollar or less pattern, and that goes to number sixteen, and that's Jen Oz zero five two four, and that's Jennifer, and I know Jennifer from uh, Knitting in the Mitten, so Jennifer just get in contact with me and let me know which pattern you would like to receive for seven dollars or less as a giftable pattern on Ravelry and I will get that sent off to you as soon as you contact me. So congratulations, and I look forward to seeing your color work mittens. The next um, drawing that we're going to do is for the North Cabin Fiber Crafts um, chatter thread. And again, this is going to be for a pattern of your choice, $7 or less. And that goes to number three, who is PJ Crossan, who is Paula. So Paula, congratulations. You have won a pattern of your choice for $7 or less. And if you start to put your, your uh, yard stash on Ravelry, I will send you a bonus pattern. <laughs> because we've talked about this. You do not have your yarn stash on Ravelry and... I'm trying to encourage you to put your yarn stash on Ravelry because honestly, I just want to see it. <laughs> I like to look at my stash and I like to look at other people's stash too. So I want to see what you have in your yarn stash. So you have won a pattern of $7 or less for your chatter in the North Cabin Fiber Crafts. And um, just get in contact with me and I will send you a pattern as soon as you tell me what you would like to receive. So congratulations, Paula. 
the next um, drawing that we're going to do is for the Cascadia. A few weeks ago, I did the, uh, the book review for Cascadia by Cooperative Press, and everybody shared all of their patterns that they liked in that book. It's a fabulous book, and honestly, I've been doing these book reviews, and I, every time I do a book review, I want to cast on patterns for the book. And I'm hoping that I will be able to cast on a pattern from the Head to Toe book very soon. Um, I want to be able to do that and, and really start to get in and, and, and experience the patterns in these books that I'm reviewing. So I can give you first-hand experience with them. Anyway, so the winner of the Cascadia ebook is number 30, and I'm going to say it's Lusa. L-U-S-S-A is the Ravelry ID, and that's Annie. So congratulations, Annie. You are the lucky winner of the ebook from Cascadia. So get in contact with me, and actually, I will go ahead and forward your name on to um, Knit Ventures, and she will probably just go ahead and send it to you. But I'd really like you to be able to learn that you won from the podcast. So get in contact with me as soon as you have... Um, seen the podcast and I will get in touch with Knit Ventures and have her send you that. If I don't hear from you in the next week or so, I will go ahead and have her um, send that over to you. But again, it's always more fun to be watching the podcast than hear your name called out. So congratulations on winning that ebook. And the last two prizes that we're going to give away, the first is going to be a pattern of $7 or less, your choice, from, from the uh, Mystery Knit Along Cow for Transitioning to Winter. This was the final drawing of the Mystery Knit Along from the Chatter Thread. And that goes to number 654, Handbag Crazy Who is Sandy. So Sandy, congratulations. You also get a pattern of $7 or less um, of your choice. So just get in contact with me and I will send it off to you as soon as you let me know. And the last prize is from the finished objects thread from Transitioning into Winter. And boy, I had so much fun watching the progress of everybody's um, shawl and seeing the finished objects and it was just very exciting and I can tell you that it has encouraged me to want to create more shawls that I can do as a mystery knit along because obviously it's exciting for a lot of people to do mystery knit alongs and I just got so excited that everybody was so excited about it. So you can definitely plan on seeing some more mystery knit alongs um, coming from me in the, in the future. I don't know how near in the future. I have a couple ideas for new patterns coming up, but they're not really mystery material kind of patterns. They're not, they're not something that you can break up into different clues and have it be a surprise at the end. But I will definitely be working on some more mystery knit alongs to come because that was a whole lot of fun. So last week I talked about um, the prize that I was going to give for the mystery knit along for the finished objects. And it's going to be a Knitting Blooms project bag and a Notions bag. And they're both with the pink on the back. And on top of that, so you get this and you will also get these two books from Donna Dracunas. And I've mentioned these on the podcast before, and these are fabulous, fabulous books. I started reading the first one, which is Discovery, and I haven't gotten very far on it because it's not, I don't typically read my knitting books, but these books are really books that you want to read. They are not, they are pattern books, but they are also kind of, um, recipes, I guess. Um, but there's so much information in these books. Just flipping through them, there's so much information. And I've read some of the just t the tidbits or just reading certain things as I went along. But this is the kind of book that I want to read from start to finish. And I just haven't taken the time to do it. In fact, I have um, another book that's sitting by my bed that I've been trying to get through and read. Um, I think it's the um, Amos Andrews or the spinning book. I don't remember the name of the person, but um, but it's a thick, thick book, and I've been trying to read it, and it just seems like I want to read everything on my Kindle. 
Now I do know that this book, Exploration, is on my Kindle because I already purchased the Kindle version and I will definitely be reading this um, on my Kindle. Um, but I wish this book was on the Kindle as well because then I might read it more often because it's so much easier to hold. My iPad, actually my iPad is kind of almost as heavy as the book, but um, but if I could read it on my, my actual Kindle, uh, my Kindle Paperwhite, it's a lot lighter. So again, the winner of the finished object for the Mystery Cow will get the Knitting, the knitting Blooms Project Bag with the Notions Pouch, as well as these books, which again, they are absolutely fabulous. And the winner is number 33, and that's Tabitha Bellinger. And again, that's Tabitha. So congratulations, you are the winner from the Mystery Knit Along. And like I said, I was so excited to see all of the finished objects for this knit along. Um, it just, it's really inspiring me to, to d do more designing and, and get those patterns out to you guys. So you can look forward to seeing some more patterns from me um, in the new year. So congratulations to all of those winners. And we have one more drawing. Yep. We have our iTunes drawing for November. I know, here we are in the middle of December and we haven't done the iTunes drawing because I forgot to do it the last time. The last time it was all about the knitting and we didn't do any prize drawings. But I have it. And I did add the four new people that have posted um, new comments since the beginning of November. And they are all in here. So no worries if you posted a comment in the last month. You are in this and you will stay in this until we stop, which probably will never stop until the podcast stops. So every month, every month I do a drawing from the iTunes comments. So if you would like to be entered for a chance to win a um, $7 or less pattern on Ravelry, and you have not already put a comment into iTunes for Knitting Blooms, then go on over to the iTunes and put in a comment for Knitting Blooms. And the next month, when um, just before I record, I go through and I look at all the new comments and I print out new labels for those people. And they go in my little sack here and I draw it on air. So let's see what we have. One winner, one winner. Right here, right here. Here's one. Do I have one? Just one? Here's one. And the winner is Fellow Knitter. And you know what? This is the same person that just posted because I just put it in and I didn't and it didn't print out of the way. Um, but it's fellow knitter. Let me look. Let me see. I don't know if I can look it up on here. Um, let me see. I might have to go over to my computer really quick. Because I didn't, I didn't pay attention when I was printing these, and apparently I didn't print all of the, the name because it cut off. But it's fellow knit or something, and hang on one second. Let me see if I can look it up on iTunes. On here without having to. Um, iTunes. I don't know if I can see comments on here though, and of course. Safari decides to crash on me. Oh no! Probably be a lot quicker if I just went over and looked on my computer. Yeah. So hang tight one one second and I will go look really quick on my computer because it's in my spreadsheet. Okay, now I have all the information. <laughs> I guess I need to pay more attention to make sure it prints out the whole cell. Anyway, it's Fellow Knitter Big D. So if that is you, then get in contact, me, in contact with me on Ravelry, and I will send you a pattern of $7 or less on Ravelry. Again, I don't have your email. I don't know how to get in contact with you, so you need to contact me. And as soon as you contact me, I will send you a pattern of $7 or less on Ravelry. And actually now, <laughs> this comes up. Let's see if it will actually show me. It's not, it's not showing me the reviews anyway. So that wouldn't have worked. Anyway, I have the information now. So again, congratulations to all the winners. We had lots of prizes today, but it was fun. Christmas, 
Christmas for everyone. So let's see. I think that was all of our drawings for today. Oops, that's not the drawing section. Yep, that's it. Congratulations to all of you. Just get in contact with me and I will send you your patterns or your prizes as soon as you get in touch with me. And that's all I've got for you this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you guys all enjoy your holiday uh, with Christmas and the New Year and all the other holidays that are happening this time of year. It is just such a joyous time of year that I hope everybody has a, a fabulous a fabulous year, a fab fabulous beginning to the next year, and I will see you in a few weeks. So, bye for now. A long time in the making with outstanding results, Barmaids delivers yet another excellent skincare formula. Simple ingredients, quick absorption, it's a healthy skin choice. ICE Serum is the perfect daily nightly eye treatment. With nourishing and protective antioxidants, this lightweight formula absorbs easily into the skin to deliver stunning results. ICE Serum is a powerful combination of natural ingredients which encourages skin regeneration, leads to tightening and toned skin due to astringent qualities, and contains potent antioxidants which help to slow down the visible signs of aging.